What is up my fellow gamers in today's video we got our SSR tier list like and sub for more amazing gaming content We also got a brand new coupon code, but this coupon code expires very very fast So you gotta hopefully you're subscribed with the notification bell so you can enter this code We're gonna enter it right now. We're gonna head on over to our avatar codes gonna be donut you like capital D O U G H N U T capital U capital L I K E. We're going to click confirm and we got some diamonds and a summon ticket. We got a lot of characters to go over, so I'm not going to try and talk too much about each individual one, but I'll try and give like a brief reason as why I'm putting them where I am. As always, tier lists are opinionated. You may or may not agree with this. This is my personal opinion. For the ranking, we have an S being the best. Then we have A, B, and C being kind of not that great. First one we got is gonna be Avril. She specializes in freezing the enemies and healing reduction. Now at first glance, it seems like she's pretty good with that healing reduction. However, there is way more characters in this game that also have that healing reduction but they also do more things than her i'm putting her in the b because i think she can be good in certain situations but a lot of the times i would rather choose one of the characters from the a or the s next one we got is going to be victoria the starry cake she's another one who does freeze and shield a lot of the water characters their whole gimmick is the freeze ability a lot of them go ahead and freeze the enemies and then they get kind of like special abilities based off if the enemy is frozen or not the freeze shield, it's okay. She's another one who's like kind of good, but only in certain situations. Another one I'm putting in the B. Next one we got is gonna be Ember, the blue fin tuna. She does AOE backlash. Now I particularly like her and I think she's a bit better than those other two. Um, it's tough because I feel like she's not quite an A for me. She's maybe like an A minus or a B plus. For this instance, I'm going to put her in the B, but she's like a high B. So I would say like a B plus for me because her AOE attacks are really, really strong. However, there are going to be better characters that we come across. Next one we got is going to be Misha, the ice soda. She specializes in freeze and slow. And this is going to be the first one out of the water that I'm going to actually put in the A. She has an amazing passive right here for the first two turns upon entering battle. She just inflicts slow on all the enemy units. So imagine, as soon as the battle starts, all the enemies are already slowed. Doesn't even have to activate a skill. It's just a passive skill, which I think makes her extremely strong. Next one we got is gonna be, I think you pronounce it like Yure. This is the Blizzard. This is an amazing, amazing guy. He's probably, I would say, almost like the best water character. I love his active skill where he ignores 20% of the defense and he grants that fierce ability, which boosts his own attack. So just a huge, massive damage dealing water character. Putting him all the way at the top in the A, not quite an S for me, um, like an A+. Next one we got is gonna be Natasha the Soul Spring. Now she is one of the more rare SSR waters. She is ridiculous. She's got Purify and Revive. Also is able to go ahead and put damage on all enemies and put debuffs on them as well. So easily an S tier for me. Next one we got is Frankie the French Snail. He specializes in stun and speed increase. He's okay. He's not like super, super amazing. He seems like he could be good. But when I was using him, I just really didn't um, experience... Uh, what I was expecting. Like I was expecting a little bit more from him. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put him in the B. And the final water one we have is gonna be Alice the Blue Cheese. She is an ultra rare SSR and she is ridiculous with her AOE chase. Her one passive ability increases her attack, HP, and then just keeps raising her crit rate by 5% until she goes ahead and hits a crit. So basically it's going to be a guaranteed crit. Going and putting her at the top in the S tier. Moving along to our fire attributes next. First one we got is gonna be Alyssa. She's gonna be a fire damage increaser. She is really, really strong with her two AOE abilities. Her passive ability goes ahead and increases the amount of damage she does to enemies who have that scorch or burn effect on them. She also gains a temporary increase to her crit of 30%, which is a lot. So she is a huge, massive damage dealing mage. For me, easily top tier A. Next one we got is Shirley, and she specializes in HP low and CC res. Flower dance passive ability is ridiculous. It boosts the damage dealt by all ally units, causing burn and scorch by 5% of her attack. 
So if her attack is ridiculously high, I mean, you're just buffing up all of your other teammates and they're going to just put out even more damage. She also has another passive ability. When her HP falls below 60%, she gains the Demonize, which increases her attack, her crit. She becomes immune to control skills. I mean, it's pretty, pretty ridiculous. For me, Shirley is easily in the S tier. Next one we got is gonna be Raven. He is an ultra rare SSR fire. He specializes in the real damage relief. One of the top tier tanks in this game, if not, could be arguably one of the best. His active skill goes ahead and does a self heal. And if he's already at full health, he gains a shield based on the difference. And then his other skill, he goes ahead and he deals true damage based on his max HP. True damage doesn't incorporate things like defense. So it's just like raw damage. So it's not modified by the enemy's like defensive stats or anything like that. Easily for me, another top tier S. Next one we got is Sky, specializes in burn and crit. This is one that is actually a little bit weaker for the fire the fire has some pretty decent ones but this guy really falls off i'm putting him in the b next one is oscar aka mr lobster specializes in burn and flame i love the flame gift passive he has basically every time he takes an attack there's a 60 percent chance that he puts the burn effect on whoever attacked him which is really strong as a tank Going ahead, putting him in the A. Next one we got is the Mexican Chili. I don't know how to say this. Specializes in burn and crit. This is one that I'm actually going to go ahead and put in the C. I think he is probably the one of the weakest out of all of the fire elements. He just doesn't bring too much to the table. Just the burn and the crit doesn't help out as much as some of these other fire characters. Next one is gonna be Annabelle, specializes in crit and regen. Now this skill is what makes her an A for me, grants a reflect shield to two allies, which cannot be dispelled. And I think that's a very important thing to understand. She also has a really strong AOE attack, applying weakness with a 50% chance, which means that it's gonna increase the amount of damage the enemies take by 30%. For me, she is easily an A tier. And the final fire one we got is gonna be the Red Velvet Lilia. She specializes in steel and confusion. She does a bunch of physical damage to the enemy with the highest attack and then she steals 10% of their attack for two turns and it can't be dispelled. So I really like that, but it's like, it's only good in certain situations. So like a lot of her other skills are just kind of mediocre to me. She never really seemed to have a huge impact on the match. For me, she's like a B plus. Moving on to our nature heroes next. First one we got is gonna be the Bamboo Shogun. But more importantly, this ability right here, he does a lot of physical damage to the unit with the lowest HP. But if the target's killed, he restores 25% of his max HP. So he's gonna be a self-healing huge damage dealer. He is a serious, serious problem, and he is very, very strong in this game. I'm going ahead, I'm putting him in the A. Next one we got is going to be Sar Sargon, Sargoon, I don't know how to say this. We got Relief and Retaliate. He is a tank, a pretty decent tank at that too, with his support ability where he protects two allies with the highest attack. Shares 40% of that damage and boosts their own damage reduction. But what I really like is the Purify. If own debuffs are greater than one, he's got a chance to reflect those debuffs back to the caster. How cool is that? For me, easily an A tier. Next one we got is the White Cabbage. I believe this is Mi Mishi? Mishi? She is insane with her immunity DPS. First skill, she blocks damage equal to a percentage of the caster's max HP and she's immune the non-control debuffs until her shield disappears. But her Razor's Edge skill is insanely strong. For me, she's easily an S tier. Next one we got is the Silver Needle Simon, specializes in Armor Break Soul Reap. He seems like he's pretty decent with his Armor Break, which reduces the target's control resistance. But a lot of the times he just felt like he was only good in like certain situations. Only good for his armor breaking ability. Other than that, he doesn't really bring too much to the table. I'm going ahead, I'm putting him in the B, only good for certain situations. Next one we got is the Lotus Soup and this is gonna be Elaine. Specializes in AOE Bleed. I love her AOE abilities. 
He goes ahead, deals a bunch of damage to all enemies, but when attacking, restores a percentage of the damage dealt to the ally with the lowest percentage. And then her other active skill, she deals, tar she deals damage to a single target and she restores HP to herself. Basically like an A plus for me. Next one we got is the Celery Lily M Medora, Midori. The passive abilities aren't that great. They only buff the stats slightly. Uh, a B, but they're kind of like a, like a B in the middle. So kind of not quite a B plus, but like a little bit better than some of these other Bs. And the last nature one we got is gonna be Nami the Shrimp princess for me she's easily a top tier at the s moving on to the earth elements next we got our first one this is going to be sammy specializes in attack increase but particularly for me they just really didn't perform very well compared to a lot of the other characters i'm putting her in the b next one we got is going to be the pineapple bun this is Kur kuromi kurumi basically what her aoe skill does is she deals damage to enemies in a row but it's shared among all affected units. So they all kind of share the same amount of damage. For me, she is easily in the S tier. Next one we got is gonna be the Uncle Sausage Robert. He is a warrior and he is uh, not that great. Specializes in frenzy resilience. I actually got him to nine stars because I had so many copies of him. And he's just really not that great compared to a lot of the other characters. For me, he's like one of the weakest. I'm putting him in the C. However, you will most likely get a lot of copies of him. So you can get him to 10 stars kind of like quicker than some of the other characters, which is okay because you can do the inheritance, which goes ahead and transfers like a 10 star character over to another. Next one we got is gonna be Miss Curry Medusa. I'm putting her at the top of A, pretty much kind of like an A plus, but not quite an S. Next one we got is gonna be the Steak Warrior Thomas, damage and resistance damage. He is a tank, but he's really just not that great. There's so many better tanks in the game than him. Going ahead, I'm putting him in the C. Next one we got is gonna be Luna. Going ahead, I'm putting her in the A. Next one we got is gonna be Bernard. Now this is the earth tank that I kind of recommend better than the other earth tank. All right, moving along to the light characters next. Now, a lot of the light and dark characters are super broken. That's kind of just how it is. They specifically make the light and dark characters the best and they are the hardest to get and make a 10 star with them. So a lot of these I'm ranking in like the S and the A. First one is the gingerbread Yumoka, Yumika, I can't say this name, but she's easily an S. She is absolutely insane with her AOE rebound. He's really strong, not quite an S for me, but he's like an A+. Next one's William, he's Chase Retaliate. William, he's always my highest damage dealer in my lineup. Even when I have other characters that have higher levels than him, he still outperforms characters that have like 30 or 40 levels higher than him. He just puts out insane amounts of damage, but he also goes ahead and has a counter attack. So when he's attacked, he's got a 60% chance to just deal 100% physical damage back to them. And I mean, it really starts to, when it starts to trigger like four and five times in a row, he just puts out so much damage. For me, he's easily one of the top tier. I'm putting him in the S. Next one we got is the Macaroon. I don't know how to say this, Miyuke, Miyuke. Arguably, this could probably be the best support character in the game. Next one we got is Hiroku. I, I can't pronounce this one either. Specializes in single high attack. She's ridiculously strong for those adventure boss battles when you just have one single boss and you need someone who hits really hard, easily at the S tier. Next one we got is the Roast Duck Jack, specializes in shock damage seal. He's another one who's just ridiculously strong, putting him at the S. Next one is gonna be the Golden Dream, specializes in energy storage synergy. She's another one, just super broken, obviously a top tier in the S. Next one, White Truffle, another S tier all the way at the top. This one we got is the Cappuccino. This is, uh, I don't know how to say this, you. Armor Break, Attack Inc. She's another one that I think is only an A plus for me. She's not quite an S, but she's definitely one of the better characters that specializes in that Armor Break status effect. And the last light one we got is gonna be the Bird's Nest, an amazing support character. Moving along to our dark heroes, we have Brett, the Sardine Warrior, Immunity DPS. This guy is ridiculous. 
I would say he's probably the best warrior in this game. Going ahead easily at the top, the S plus category. Next one is Neko, Nico, the Black Witch. An insanely strong mage that just pumps out a lot, a lot of damage. Another top tier S. Next one is the Twin Saints, uh, M Mia and Yuri. For me, another one that's easily an S tier. Then we got Chloe, another S tier. Then we got Kazen, really strong damage dealing warrior specializes in the slay AOE heal. The thing that makes him ridiculously strong is this part. If the target's HP falls below 30% on the second strike, you just instantly destroy them and it's capped at five times his own attack. Next one we got is the Sea Swallow, Aurora. She's one that I think is really strong, specializes in bleed and silence, but she's not quite an S for me. I'm putting her in the A. I think she's like an A plus. Next one we got is the C Mirage, specializes in cursed and stun. Another S tier, ridiculously strong with her AOE attacks. Next one, Elizabeth, the Bloody Mary. We got a shield, heal, attack, decrease. Another really strong support, easily another S tier. Next one is gonna be the Dreamy Soup. Another ridiculously strong character, AOE heal and heal decrease. I mean, as you can see guys, like, all the dark characters, all the light characters, they're super broken. And the final one, this is in a special event that's going on. We got uh, Shiru, the Cat Poop Coffee. He specializes in sneak and damage increase. Another one, easily an S tier. So that is it. That is my personal tier list. You made it to the end of the video. Comment your favorite emoji. Hope you guys and girls enjoyed the video. It was a super duper long one. Stay happy, stay safe. I'll see y'all later. Peace.